Hi, and welcome back. My name is Matt Nightingale. I'm a senior generative AI solutions architect at AWS, focusing on generative AI training and inference. In this video, we'll show training Llama 7B using SageMaker model parallelism libraries in FP8 on SageMaker Hyperpod. At the end of this video, you should have an idea of how to run distributed training on SageMaker Hyperpod, as well as get a sense of the core resiliency features, including auto resume on Hyperpod. Before jumping into the live demo, let's review the architecture which we have deployed. Our Hyperpod cluster consists of a single M5-12x large as the head node, as well as four MLP5-48x larges as the compute nodes. We've also provisioned a 1.2 tebabyte FSx for Lustre file system, uh, which is mounted to all of the cluster nodes. Finally, we'll SSH into the head node to launch our jobs. So to start, I'm going to clone our awesome distributed training repository, which includes several test cases uh, and examples. For today's demo, we're going to be following the SageMaker model parallel v2 example. So I'm going to head on over to the head node. Here I can see that I've got four idle nodes within my P5 cluster, and I'm going to clone our repository. Awesome, with the repository cloned, now I'm gonna CD into Awesome Distributed Training and head over to Test Cases and 17 SageMaker Model Parallel. You can feel free to follow along on the README. Uh, the setup here is gonna be fairly simple. Uh, in this case, we're gonna follow the uh, run training using Docker and Enroot on Slurm instructions. So for starters, we will uh, create a Docker file uh, which will then convert to a squash file using Enroot and Pixies. We'll reference this file within our training script. It's a fairly simple script. We're just using ECR to fetch uh, an image. Um, this is the SageMaker model parallel v2 image, and then we're going to use Docker build to build it. And then we'll use NVIDIA Enroot, which comes pre-installed on our Hyperpod cluster, to convert this to a squash file and save it to our local directory as SMPv2. We'll then be able to reference the squash file in our distributed training job. Great. So let's head back over to our cluster. Now it's best practice to build any Docker containers uh, on the controller nodes. Um, not only do the controller nodes have more cores, um, Docker is also installed uh, into to use NVMe storage, uh, 27 terabytes of NVMe storage on the P5 instances. Uh, this is quite a lot of storage, but container these Docker container images can be fairly large, so to avoid filling up disk space on the controller node, we're going to build our image on the, the compute node. Great, so I've just initiated the Docker build script. This will take 10 to 15 minutes for the Docker container to build. When it's done building, we'll come back and set up our distributed training job. Hey, welcome back. It looks like our Docker file has finished building, uh, so we can resume following along our example to use SageMaker model parallel to train Llama 70B. Now that we've run the Docker build script, let's verify that the squash file exists in our local repository. Here we can see smpv2.sqsh, 18 gigabytes. Fantastic. So the next step will be to launch the distributed training.sbatch script. Before we do so, let's take a look at that script and modify any parameters as needed before launching our training job. I can confirm that the squash file was properly written to my local directory, and it's about 18 gigabytes, smpv2.sqsh. Now if I navigate to the launch training enroot.sh script, I'm going to change a couple of the default parameters here for the sake of today's demo. 
For number of nodes, I'm going to set the number of nodes to 4, which is equal to the amount of P5 nodes I have within my Slurm cluster. I'll leave the other sbatch parameters as default, including exclusive job node allocation, to make sure that this is the only job launched by Slurm onto my cluster nodes. For model size, here I've set model size equal to 7B, uh, and we're going to be using the Llama V2 model. I'm going to leave using synthetic data equal to 1 as default. This will use synthetic data for the purposes of my demo. Um, if I had my own training data, I would specify the path in the script here, lines 28 through 30, uh, to my training directory as well as my test directory. I've created a checkpoints directory in the local directory I'm in called checkpoints. That will be referenced to my script on line 30. And finally, I have my squash file on line 33, uh, smpv2.sqsh from my local directory. Scrolling down, we have some environment variables for nickel that we're exporting, including uh, FIEFA use device RDMA, which we're setting to 1. This will ensure that EFA traffic is using the uh, device RDMA feature uh, on the P5 instances. Finally, we have the number of GPUs equal to 8. Scrolling down to the model parameters, we're using the 7B model, which will have a default shard degree equal to 8, and number of attention heads equal to 32. We've set our train batch size equal to 4, max steps to 10,000, and checkpoint frequency will keep at 100. With these parameters set, we should be good to launch our script. Let me check the status of the cluster nodes. I have four nodes idle. Launch training and root.sh. And so now I've just kicked off the Slurm SBATCH script. We'll come back in just a few minutes to confirm that we've written our first checkpoint, after which we'll simulate auto resume by injecting a failure on one of the cluster nodes. See you in just a few minutes. OK, welcome back. Our training job is kicked off. We're currently on about batch 30. Uh, we can see we're running with FP8 at uh, 420 TFLOPs per GPU and about 80 samples per second. So our training is already underway. Um, I want to verify that we've got a checkpoint in our checkpoints directory. Excellent. So I can see we've got some previous checkpoints written, meaning that uh, we can go ahead with the simulation of our auto resume to inject a failure into one of the cluster nodes and show how Hyperpod will automatically resume from the latest checkpoint uh, to uh, recover from hardware failure during the training process. OK, on the left hand side, I'm outputting the job logs. And on the right hand side, I've SSH'd into one of the nodes which my job is running on. If I run NVIDIA SMI, I can see that there are processes running on the GPUs. Now I'm going to inject an ECC error using NVIDIA DCGMI into this node, and then kill the Python processes which are running the training job. This will simulate a health uh, node failure on this node during training. So I killed the Python process, and on the left side, you can see that the job has failed, and SageMaker Hyperpod Auto Resume is now running checks on the cluster nodes to determine if any of them are unhealthy. SageMaker Cluster Agent is currently communicating with the cluster nodes. Now it has queued job 7 and is waiting for resources. So node 104978 has been removed from my training job. The job has been paused. I've now been kicked out of that node because SageMaker Hyperpod has terminated the node, and Hyperpod will bring up a new replacement node, execute the lifecycle scripts, bring that node into the cluster, and resume the training job without any manual intervention. We'll be back in just a few minutes to view this job resuming from the latest checkpoint. OK, welcome back. We've been tracking our job logs for our distributed training job since we injected the error on one of the cluster nodes. And we can see that the job is now resuming. Uh, so SageMaker Hyperpod has shrunk the job to three nodes and then 
uh, restarted the training job from the latest checkpoint. Here is a live output of the job logs, and on the left hand side, I can run sinfo and sq. I see that job 5 has resumed training. On the right hand side, we have our iterations uh, now appearing again as well. So this involved no manual intervention on my part, other than injecting the job failure on the node. SageMaker Hyperpod detected the failure, isolated the bad node, replaced the bad node, and resumed the training job from the latest checkpoint. Thanks for watching. In this video, we demonstrated how to train Llama 7B using SageMaker Model Parallel in FP8 on SageMaker Hyperpod. We also demonstrated how to trigger an auto-resume action with SageMaker Hyperpod by injecting a failure on the node and watching the job resume gracefully from the latest save checkpoint without any manual intervention. If you enjoyed the uh, content in this video, please check out the resources on this slide, which includes an uh, overview of SageMaker Hyperpod, as well as our SageMaker Hyperpod workshop, which contains all the resources you need to get started running distributed training on SageMaker Hyperpod today, as well as a plethora of best practices picked up uh, that, are, that we, our team shares with you. Finally, we link our awesome distributed training repository, which contains test cases for a number of popular frameworks, including DeepSpeed, PyTorch, FSDP, SageMaker Model Parallel, and SageMaker Distributed Data Parallel. My name is Matt Nightingale. Thanks so much for watching today's video, and happy training.